friend of yours says, let's go bowling tomorrow night. If you like bowling, you might say, all right, let's make a plan. Let's decide where to go, when to meet, things like that. But now imagine the same friend says, let's have gone bowling last night. You wouldn't start making plans. You'd start wondering about the sanity of your friend. We don't think that we can make plans for yesterday in the same way that we can make them for tomorrow. That's because time has a direction. There's an arrow of time that points from the past to the future that tells us what direction time flows in. And scientifically, we actually understand how the arrow of time works pretty well. What we don't understand is why it exists at all, why there is an arrow of time in our universe. If you think about a cup of coffee with some cream, you will know that you can mix coffee and cream together very easily. You can put a spoon in, stir it around, the cream and the coffee will mix together no problem. What never happens is that you start with cream and coffee mixed together. You put a spoon in, you stir it, and they unmix. That's because there's a direction to things that happen in the real world. You can mix things together very easily, you cannot unmix them. That's because of entropy in the second law of thermodynamics, and scientists have understood it for over a hundred years now. What they don't understand is why the universe in which we live has this property that the entropy started so small in the first place. Everything around us is a reflection of entropy going up. The fact that you remember yesterday, but not tomorrow. The fact that you can make plans for tomorrow, but not for yesterday. The fact that you grow older. The fact that you can mix things together and not unmix them. This is all a reflection of the fact that entropy is going up. But that means it started very small, and that's a question for cosmology. That's a statement about the Big Bang, what happened 14 billion years ago at the very beginning of the universe. The universe is like a wind-up toy that started all wound up and has been relaxing and moving around ever since. And eventually it will wind down. In the far future, one Google years from now, the universe will stop moving. Everything will have just died out. So why is that? Why did the universe start near the Big Bang in this wound up state? And the answer is we don't know. Modern cosmology does not know the answer to that question. So in my book, From Eternity to Here, I think about different possible answers to that question. You start with Einstein, space-time, what time really means, black holes, wormholes, time travel. We think about entropy and Ludwig Boltzmann, the slightly crazy Austrian physicist who was the master of entropy. We talk about information theory and complexity and the meaning of life, quantum mechanics, there are thought experiments involving cats and dogs, and then we get to the universe and how entropy works in the universe. And just like our cup of coffee is part of a bigger system, part of the kitchen which is part of the solar system, which is part of the galaxy, which is part of the universe, the best understanding of why there's an arrow of time within our universe is that our universe is not all there is. Our universe could be part of a much bigger multiverse. And the way that our universe came out of that multiverse could help explain why the Big Bang was so special, why it had such a tiny entropy. We don't know the answers. These are speculations that we're trying to figure out how to test these ideas. But the great part of it is that we start thinking about the cup of coffee. We start thinking about why we remember yesterday and not tomorrow. And from taking these things seriously, from trying to understand the arrow of time, we're led to think about the very furthest edges of the universe, and maybe even a little bit beyond.